NUA International Lecture Series 2021. This is the last lecture series of uh, NUA. It's uh, my pleasure to welcome all of you here today. And today the topic is actually very much related to the current situation, what we are facing at the moment. So during this presentation, if you have any questions or you, you need to have any kind of uh, doubt, you can always uh, send a message on the chat box. And at the end of the lecture, I will be able to answer you. So before we start, I would like to wel welcome you and say Merry Christmas. And uh, dear students, welcome to NUA International Lecture Series 2021. As I said, the last lecture of this year, season greetings, Merry Christmas to you all. Today's topic is very relevant in today's situation globally. So today we need to deliberate how to prepare yourself for the future career in new normal life. I think this is a very important aspect which we need to talk about today. And it's important mainly because we all are at the moment in a crisis. So our agenda for today is divided in five parts. First, it will be introduction and understanding your strength as a Generation Z. What is required to develop in yourself to be ready for your future career in these challenging times? And most important, how to create a new skill set in you to be ready to enter new normal life? And what skill set needed to upgrade, reskill for a new normal career? what you need to prepare for the job interview pre or post pandemic era. So this is also very important. So we need to understand in completely in the broader perspective, the entire situation. I have been studying career change for the past two decades, a period that has spanned the dot-com boom and bust the 2008 financial crisis, the subsequently extended bull market run, and now the pandemic that has brought that run to an end. This experience has taught me that a few simple principles can help those living through hard times continue to focus on reinventing their career in the new normal life. So let us understand what is a new normal life. The new normal life will be different from the world before. There's no going back to normal as the global pandemic has already shifted our perception, behavior, and complete paradigm shift. Dramatic restructuring of the economic and social order in which business and society have traditionally operated. It's a complete paradigm shift. There might still be a constraint and adjustment in the new normal, but that will be the new norm. So it's an opportunity to learn from a plethora of social inventions and experiments, ranging from working from home to large scale surveillance and understanding of which innovation, if adopted permanently, might provide substantial uplift to the economic and social welfare. During the new normal life, our attitude and mindset need to change as well to face the current challenges. Do not wait until the facts are in. They may be never be. To act is important in a crisis. Good now is better than perfect later. In the world of uncertainty, you have to stand up for a goal that will matter above all else. You need to now start to think very carefully that after you graduate, what kind of career you'll be choosing for today itself. So follow your passion. Everybody says that before you make a leap. Thoroughly, thoroughly investigate your career pivot. Every bold 
named personality that gives a commencement speech tells the graduation class follow your dreams and pursue your passions is a nice sentiment but not terribly helpful the commencement speaker should add the important caveat that their passion should include something that is marketable and could provide an income that you are comfortable with if your passion does not lend itself to a viable vocation, it will merely be a hobby. You need to be able to monetize it. Otherwise, you'll end up unhappy since you can't pay the rent and will ultimately fall out of love with your passion. Better advice would be to pursue not just your passion, but a combination of what you are intrinsically talented in and possess the right skill set. Fill a need for the product or services you are offering and it pays well enough. Then as you become more successful, you will grow even more passionate about what you're doing. It is important to have a safety net as well. This way you're not jumping into deep end of the pool of the highest diving board dip your toes in the shallow water first and slowly made into the deeper end over time research and thoroughly investigate what you want to do next find out if additional knowledge or accreditations are required are there job opening the field you want to enter and is there a need in the marketplace for the new business that you're considering these are all very important aspects. Facing fear in the new normal is very normal, actually. As you can see, we are in the phase four and getting ready for phase five. Hence, change is inevitable. Often the hardest changes to understand and adjust to are the ones that are expected and out of your control a recession, a global pandemic, or a major disaster. For example, changes of this magnitude can be difficult to come to terms with, but you often find that your experience of them can make things better or worse, depending on your reaction and your attitude. As everybody knows, your attitude decides your altitudes. It's very fitting at this moment. You need different ways to approach change. The restriction that you might have and how to best cope up with. People tend to cope with change in one or two ways. First, escaping, escape coping or control coping. Escape coping is based on avoidance. Control coping, on the other hand, is positive and proactive. You refuse to behave like a victim of change. Instead, you manage your feelings, get supported, and do whatever you can to be part of the change. In reality, most of us respond to major change with a mixture of escape and control coping, but control coping is generally the better option as it's impossible to avoid the reality of change for long. It is quite evident. You can see in the time where billions of students get out of the school, study online, during this stage, your focus will likely start to shift away from what you have lost and towards what new. This process may be slow and you might be reluctant to acknowledge it, but it's an essential part of coping with this change you're facing at the moment. The key here is to make commitment to move on, positive attitude, positive thinking. Start to explore more deeply what the change means. Your instinct may be to behave resentfully and to be unwilling to cooperate, but this may cause yourself and others harm. So search for
for an emphasis the positive aspects of your developing situation. At the same time, be patient. Remember, coming to terms with change is gradual process. Face the realities and see both sides of the coin, not only one side, which is the most important thing which people forget. You see, the different countries face different challenges and has different economic inputs and impacts. You being an international student coming from various parts of the world, you must think globally and act locally. Locally based on the ground situation of the country where you live in. You can see here, the US is more optimistic than European countries, but less optimistic than India or China. You can see that consumers with higher incomes, those make more than US dollar 100,000 per year, showed higher level of optimism. Those concerns are reflected in lowered expected spending levels. In the US, 44% of consumers say that they will reduce their spending over the few months, while 43% said they're delaying purchases due to uncertain economic outlook. At the same time, South Korea, which was managed to slow spread of the virus very efficiently like China, only 25% of consumers said they are confident of a quick rebound. And about half said they expected a decline in the personal financial situation so you must study the key indicators of your country while planning your career for future, where you are going to settle down and build up your life and career. This is very important. This is where you need to be very focused. So the best way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing action. It's time to know yourself, who you are, before starting your career journey. It's very, very important. You are Generation Z, a very special generation. So now it's time to understand yourself as Generation Z. Recently at Global Uni Talks and China Daily, media giant of China, conducted a joint survey globally in 179 countries with over 5,000 Generation Z interviews to understand your generations and the results are as under. You all are Generation Z representing 37% of the world population, according to the projection by Bloomberg analysis. Your generation is change makers, unafraid to use their voice to advocate for cause they deem important, such as sustainability, equality, and mental health. You see yourself in a global village coming from all parts of the world and want to be both locally and globally rooted. You emerge as a progressive cohort with various degree of intensity depending on countries. You want to take a control of your own lives and want to be defined by your success. It's a good news. You are a diverse and open mind cohort a special generation having special circles, which include ethnic, national, religious, gender, sexuality, diversity, then your previous generations. You are dubbed as digital natives and digital savvy. You are the ultimate master of these tools and know how to make the best use of meaningful purpose with a clear editorial line. Nevertheless, this hyper-connectivity does not distract you from being aware of the pitfall of social media like desocialization, loneliness, cyberbullying. You have greatly contributed to expansion of the every evolving internet culture. You are the individuality, which is your key. You give more priorities and emphasis during adolescence in creating your own path whether it's a building a new education system or your own personal brand. You reframe outdated social construct and create a new ones. You are attracted towards self-expression and empowerment and individuality. 
you believe in authenticity by being true to yourself, which is essential for your generation. As you are expert in detecting fakeness, you possess six sense to smell fake, marketing and expect transparency and genuinity. You are visual and communication experts. You know how to present itself to the world and while you go about it different ways of reclaiming, when it is a part of your DNA, you are capable of crafting a more refined and perfect version of yourself online that is playing on a more conventional ideals of success, money, and beauty. You're self-taught and have a thirst of, for knowledge, which is driving you towards quest of self-actualization. You do not rely on traditional educational tools. You believe in the knowledge learned in the real world is more relevant, more useful, and often more accessible. You are drawn to people or institutions that can speak honestly from first-hand experience. You are a generation that seeks to amplify previous silent voices. You are a purpose-driven generation, fundamentally a progressive cohort, actively working on building a fairer world. Real-life activists or a social media sharer, you mobilize instinctively to effect a change. You are known for being strong advocate of inclusivity, diversity, sustainability, and also you care mental health. You're pragmatic planners, financially conservative. You're looking for a stability and aiming to achieve long-term objectives. You are considered as a pragmatic cohort and which takes concrete steps to reach their set goals. So it's something very interesting about your generation. You are controlled, obsessed through you living on the internet, but you understood its pitfalls as well. You want to have a total control over your lives, which is very important. Hence, this instant and essence need to control burdens your generation with heavy pressure, which is seen through the higher level of anxiety and mental health issues your generation is experiencing. You are creative, hungry nature, which is perceived as the ultimate tool to express your individuality, cultural relevancy, and for the same way to make a living and educate and adapt cultural hybridation and creativity. Having said so, you are also a peer-to-peer -peer believer, not relying on traditional authority and irrelevant to icons. You believe in equal partnership and community-based interaction. Good news is that you are a holistically health seeker as compared to your previous generations. You believe in investing in long-term health, be it mental or physical. Your fluidity advocates, your identities not being fixed and assigned at birth, which is your big belief. You define yourself as fluid and non-conforming. This fluidity does not just apply to sexual orientation or gender, but also your wider interest. So in conclusion, you are very special. You think so? Guys, do you think so? Yeah, Professor. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, Professor. Okay, so this research looks correct, right? Do you think this research is correct? The feedback? So, so in conclusion, since you are already a unique and resilient generation, this pandemic and more globally, the higher challenging year of 2020, 2021 was not a shock to the to a system per se. I firmly believe 
that these multiple crises solidify your generations with some key drivers, like your quest for self-actualization, your purpose-driven mindset, your faith in peer-to-peer, -peer, and lack of trust and institution and older generation. During this unstable, unpredictable era, you as Generation Z should be focused on building stability and future proofing your lives with a, with a more hedonistic approach towards your life, which is on the horizon for you, making you more mature and pushing you strongly to reach adulthood. It will be the best to look for a more balanced lifestyle and invest even more in self-care and the right to let go the always on mindset. Your attitude should be applied to your quest for information and justice, as you are always looking for ways to be change makers. This intense quest will lead to polarization within your generation. So this is something very positive. And I think this is very, very good study, uh, which was uh, published and which uh, I think uh, have a very good accuracy. You are a positive thinking person. So positive thing is that in your generation wants to reach adulthood faster than any other generation in comparison to millennials. Thanks to the time, thanks to the situation, thanks to the environment, thanks to many things which make you what you are. You are very fast tracking towards adulthood. Since you are desperate to grow up, and not like millennials procrastinating and rejecting markers of adulthood. You are maturing faster and have ability to live on crisis and stress and challenging situations, which is making you mature faster. You're growing fast with self-reliant and so you believe in your own potential and ready to affect change and take control of your own destiny. So this is a summary now that you know your strength and you understand who you are in general. So that's why I was trying to make you know who are you. You have to see yourself in the mirror, who we are, your generation, and then you'll be able to start thinking how and which way we should be moving forward, keeping in mind what is your strength, what is your personality, what kind of cohort are you, what kind of generation are you? So let's study what is required to develop in yourself to be ready for your future career in these challenging times. First, develop many possible selves. When you don't know what the future will bring or what and when the path you thought you were on takes an unexpected turn, it makes sense to pursue a diverse portfolio of options rather than just sticking single-minded to one. It is necessary. Messy journey of exploration. And to do it right, you have to experiment with test and learn about a range of possible selves. Possible selves are the ideas we all have about who we want or might want to become. Some are concrete and well-informed by experience. Others are vague and fuzzy, nascent and untested. Some are realistic, others are pure fantasy. And naturally, some appeal more to us than others. So guys, today, more than ever, the path to our, your career will be circuitous to cover all of the ground you need to cover, it's vital to let yourself imagine a divergent set of possible selves and futures. Embrace that process and explore as many of them as you can. This is my humble suggestion. Second, embrace the liminal period, the hallmark of the career change process is the emotional experience of liminality that is of existing betwixt and between a past 
that is clearly gone and a future that is still uncertain. Liminality can be an unpleasant state to inhabit emotionally. People going through it feel unmoored, lose their bearings and oscillate between hold on and letting go. But this fraught stage is a necessary part of a journey because it allows you to process a lot of complex emotions and conflicting desires and ultimately preventing you from shutting down prematurely and missing better options that still lie ahead. The current crisis is likely to prolong this in between states for many of us. While frustrating at times, the state has its benefit. As Bill Bridgets has written in his book, Transitions, we need not feel defensive about this apparently unproductive time out at turning points in our lives. In apparently aimless activity of our time alone, we are doing some important inner business. Actually, so true. Neurologists suggest and the study says that taking advantage of liminal time to do that inner business inside you may be more beneficial than engaging in a flurry of busy making self-improvement efforts. So it's very interesting. Downtime is crucial, not only for replenishing the brain stores of attention and motivation, but also for sustaining cognitive process that allow you to fully develop our humanity. It is how we consolidate memories, integrate what we have learned, plan for the future, maintain our moral compass and construct our sense of ourselves, who we are. Third, get going on project, just get going on project. The most common path to career reinvention involves doing something on the side, cultivate knowledge, skills, resources, and relationships until you have got strong new legs to walk on in exploring a new career. One nights and weekends, people take part-time courses, do pro bono or advisory work and develop startup ideas. Don't forget that. In one of the research projects I did on a book on a working identity, which was devoted to the subject of career invention, as I mentioned, I found that most people work on several possibilities at one time. Comparing and contrasting the pros and cons of each other. This activity is crucial because it helps you to work through not only the practical questions, but also the existential ones that drive career change. Who am I? Who do I want to become? Where can I best contribute? We learn who we want to become by testifying and testing fantasies and realities, and of course, by doing. So this is very important. Our current condition of quarantine and lockdown, which I'm also in, limit the possibilities. Of course, people have long used contract or advisory work to explore new options or to finance new ventures. For example, but not essential budgets are now drying up, frankly. And as a result, many people are finding these avenues obstructed currently. Nevertheless, under the present circumstances, many people are finding it easier than before to reallocating time and resources to back burner projects. And many people are already taking advantage at the moment. In one of the webinars on career invention, I saw online poll asking participants to describe how they're responding to this coronavirus crisis. 50% of the 2000 people who responded reported that it has given the opportunity to try new things or learn new skills to me. In some cases, these new skills are directly related to working remotely. That's certainly been the cause for me, like most of my faculty colleagues in any way, have had a quicker 
learn how to teach online. You did not need to limit your projects to the domain of your desired career change or future career. Many people today are doing rewarding work and making surprisingly discoveries by engaging in crisis initiative of the organization or in community of volunteer efforts. The point is to do new and different work with new and different people because the process represents an opportunity to learn about yourself, your preference and dislikes and the kind of contacts and people that bring best out of you. Fourth, work your dormant ties. We should always forget this. We all know that networking is a contract sport, which makes it hard to play in a lockdown for sure. Many people today are wondering how the current environment, they are initiated and built the relationship that need to reinvent themselves, relationship with people who was by struggling to adopt to difficult circumstances themselves. The golden rule of networking for career change or for the new career has been always to mobilize your weak ties. Your weak ties is very important to remember. That is the relationship you have with the people you don't know so well, or you don't see them very often. In order to maximize your chances of learning things, you don't know already the problem with friends, family, and close co-workers or your classmates, your stronger ties, obviously, is that they know the same thing you know, actually. That they, know, they don't know something very special that what you don't know. They all want to help you, of course, but they are unlikely to be able to help you think creatively about your future. That's for sure. It's mere likely that they will be just like a pigeonhole for you. But there is a catch here. When it comes to your weak ties, although these people are more likely to be a source of useful new information and resources, they're also likely to be less motivated to help you, especially when they have stretched themselves. For this reason, in times of uncertainty, people rely more on the strong ties, which is very normal, which are based on commitment, trust, obligation, for sure. So we have a weak ties and strong ties conundrum. One way around it to make use of your dormant ties the relationship with people who you were one close to and you've never contacted for a long time, maybe a few years, it, it's, it's very clearly studied that more, more than 200 to 500 executives were asked in a, in a poll to reconnect with such people and to use the interaction to get information or advice that might help them on an important project work. These executives reported back that the advice they received from these dormant resources was an average more valuable and novel than what they obtained from their more active relationship or strong ties. So remember, guys, your dormant ties you need to reactivate. Fifth, talk it out. In the middle of confusion, that career you want to do or career change you want to do in future. Many have hoped that instruction will eventually produce a flash of blinding insight. But I, has, I have learned in my working identity research, solitary instruction, which not coupled with active experimentation is dangerous because it can lead us to get stuck in the realm of daydreams, which of course provide neither gainful employment nor career fulfillment. So self-reflection, paradoxically, is the best nourished by talking out loud, loud and clear in social exchanges with kindred spirit who respond, sympathize, commiserate, question, read your body language, and share your experience and their experience. One of the reasons potential career changers benefit so much from attending courses is that the fellow student represent a ready-made community of kindred spirit to talk to. 
just the simple act of creating and telling a story about what you know and what you want to do or what you want to make a change can clarify your thinking and propel you forward by committing you publicly to make a change. Ask any veteran storyteller, they will tell you there's no substitute for practicing in front of a live audience. So that's why I'm proud to be a founder of Global Uni Talks, where all the young generation Z like you talk with the live audience live and get benefited. But even that is hard in the current context of self-isolation, social distancing, still with a bit of initiative and creativity, you can find ways to explain yourself out loud by scheduling walks that respect social distancing, obviously, by working with career coach online, by creating a Zoom group that means regularly to share plans and ideas, which I mentioned similar to like Global Uni Talks. In the end, what it comes to reinventing your career is in the time of crisis, remember this important point, the time is get going is now, but don't go it alone. Don't do it alone. Lastly, turbocharge self-organization, follow time management, do anger management, work on your emotional responses. Initial distortion at the prospect of change usually give way to very strong wave of emotions. Even if the change in your circumstances is something that you have investigated yourself or instigated yourself, you may find yourself swinging between optimism and pessimism. This is quite natural and it's normal step on the way to resolving your situation which you are in currently. So mental health is the key for your success and your career for your future. Remember this point. So let's see how we are going to create new skill set in you to be ready for the new normal life. A report by Deloitte Access Economics considered that two third of jobs by 2025 to 2030 will be made up of soft skill intensive occupation. So developing and enhancing this is the key. That's the reason why I always ask you to prepare a presentation, uh, join the debate, join the speech, do this, do that. Only one reason I 100% believe that in future, this quality, this learning will make you somewhere. And you will be, I'm quite confident. And this is not only my research, but this is a global research. So your soft skills are paramount important in your education. This you cannot get in the university. You have to find another way. And you have the way, you're lucky. First, most important thing is develop in your self-leadership skills. Again, this all comes from various activity, which I push you every day to do. Please note, having good leadership skill is not strictly about supervising or managing others, no. Instead, it's all about communicating your strategy, your vision, while encouraging others and embracing feedbacks from your peers as well. Hence, being self-aware and holding yourself accountable is particularly important during this challenging time. Second, be flexible because flexibility and adaptability is very important. It's something we have all to get used to over the last two years already during this crisis. Kindly note that businesses worldwide see a stark rising number of employees being able to work from home. And like you're studying online. It is likely the new way of working and studying will last even after the pandemic passes. That's quite possible. While being flexible in workplace, and also in your study actually, was once aligned with geographic mobility. <clears throat> but now it is all about <clears throat> having an open mindset, being able to work well under pressure. 
deadlines, milestones, adjusting to new and unexpected deadlines, prioritizing tasks, and in some instances, taking additional responsibility voluntarily. This is quite important. You are studying in NUA critical thinking. This course I introduced this year, I'm very confident that this was going to help you a long way as well, because this is one of the success which you will get by critically thinking and developing the skills. As for the data published in Society of Human Resource Management, found that 37% of the employees consider problem solving and critical thinking among the top soft skill candidates lacked. So you, if you have that ability and you develop these skills, you have a big chance for your career in future. In the era where navigating fake news and contrasting data in a daily struggle, it's critical that you be able to think clearly, rationally, as you objectively evaluate information in order to make informed decision. This is something you are really actually already likely to be doing even without realizing every day. Good critical thinkers ask questions that can help them to dig a little deeper. Questions such as what's happening? Why is important? Who is being affected? Where did this information come from? Can I be sure about the source? Remember guys, International relations is an intricate profession where critical thinking and an understanding of cross-culture ideas are invaluable. You are an international student. You are studying in a cross-culture environment. Over 126 country students study together with you. So it's you are lucky as actually you know that you have such kind of exposure. Fourth, everybody knows this. You need to be tech savvy. Well, you are actually but you have to still develop a lot. Even before coronavirus, the growing digital small skill gaps was apparent across business worldwide, obviously. In fact, 90% of job vacancy now required digital skills and technology oriented mind in some way or the other. However, the pandemic has accelerated and the desperate need of specialist digital skill set, the skill sets to help businesses become more aligned with today's myriad technologies and platforms is inevitable. With the fourth industrial revolution on the horizon, investment, not just in technologies, but in people who understand technology's priorities for all the companies, small, big, or multinational Fortune 500. Although even the government, even state-owned enterprises, although it's unlikely that you need to know every system or platform, demonstrating a solid working knowledge of data literacy, computer programming, big data, the cloud, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and more and more, and how catapult your profile above the rest. So it's a time for you to start thinking this aspect very, very clearly and deeply. Fifth, again, communication and emotional intelligence, developing your IQ, EQ, and also AQ. Communication and social intelligence go hand in hand, but there's still a need for genuine human connection and understanding every job role actually. To be good emotional intelligence is to be aware of and demonstrate empathy for others' emotions and behaviors, which is crucial, especially when people are feeling uneasy. And this is also where good communication skills are critical. As many of us in future will continue to work from home, so clarity on emails messages and at virtual meeting is a must to cement trust and retain high productive levels. So this is very important 
especially during this pandemic period. Sixth, developing creativity and innovation. While we have seen machines and digital technologies takes on role in analytics and business operation, human beings are still unique in being able to think out of the box. Creativity is not only associated with typically creative profession, either it's essential across, across every industry and sector. In the coming years, the business landscape is going to need to evolve and adapt rapidly. For example, anyone aspiring to work in business will need to be able to tap into their creative mindset in order to steer the business while through challenges, challenges and opportunity they are going to face. Seventh, networking with colleagues, your classmates. It's very important, as I mentioned earlier. At this time, you being an international student representing 126 countries in NUA, you cannot imagine your network among yourself. It will be phenomenal. You may not know its benefit now, but in years to come, you don't know who will be where and how you will be able to make this networking work for your future career. You have just no idea at this moment. But I've seen many such examples that this networking always helps a lot. Typically, in China, I did a case study. Even the professors who are going to retire, every year, they have a yearly party with their high school classmates, university classmates, year by year, and they come with their families and have a gala dinner. Somehow or the other, they continue to have connection, WeChat group on Weibo or QQ and different platforms. And this Guanxi in Chinese and this networking relationship help them a lot. Sometimes how talented you are is not important. Whom you know is very important. Who recommend you is very important. So human element is key in success of life. So this is very important. You need to keep in your mind. Take advantage. Number eight, identify your skill gaps and focus on self-development. Once your identity, your future career option is clear, it will be easy for you to start identifying the skills you may need or need to focus on which will bring niche in you for your career planning to take forward. At the same time, start doing self-development by participating on, on platforms where you could develop your communication skills, soft skills, including public speaking and presentation skills. You already have so many opportunities provided by NUA and by me as well. Take advantage, don't lose out. It's all for your benefit. Ninth, harness the power of technology. Very important at this era. In the age of technology driven economy, a technology-driven economy, try to learn new things other than your regular university offered courses. You find a way online study or you, you find different ways and methods without an excuse. Take time. Today, it's an era of AI, AR, VR, and nanotechnologies. The university pure degree is not going to lead you or fetch you a very good job or is a guarantee of any good future jobs, no. How much you built up your resume by not only developing various leadership quality, your communication skills, loudly you talk, you are a project manager, you are a team player, blah, blah, blah. It's okay, but at the same time, technologically, what you know, what area you are good at other than your pure degree and the subjects which everybody is studying together. Tenth, explore alternate, alternative digital learning tools. These are several new tools and apps in the market, which is used by companies across the border 
doing the business and using them day in, day out. Even Zoom, on which we are having this webinar offline, online, NUA lecture series 2021, are linked with many advanced tools. Now we are live on YouTube. You can just go and click and you can jump into the YouTube or you can just copy and you can see later all your life. So you have to enhance new knowledge, understand new apps, new tools, start to upgrade your presentation skills, which you're already developing. That's why you're making so many presentations all through the semesters over a year. How to make videos, make a video presentation, flash presentation, presentation with animation, and many other attractive ways to engage attention and make a pitch to the audience and your future employers and also your future universities where you're going to study for your higher education. Try to build up resumes, guys. This is the time. Lastly, consider differently. Think out of the box. Do not follow the herd behavior. Try to develop innovation thinking approach. Spark ideas and work on them diligently. There is a famous saying which I knew when I was a child and I remember very well. That do not follow the path where it may lead. Go instead where there is no path. At least you left a trail behind. That should be your attitude. I think this is something very important. Now let's see, we are talking about skills. You may be wondering what skills you need to develop. You see in front of you, in content creation, video conferencing, documenting and sharing, channel-based communication, task management, polling. There's so many things best for you and the tools available. I don't know how much of these you're already knowing and how much you still need to learn. It's not very difficult actually. So if you're building up a resume and you're in an interview and you say, yes, I'm able to work on all these platforms and all these areas during the pandemic time, <clears throat> this is very important. The employers will be very pleased. I think this is something which you need to focus on because COVID-19 employment impact is very big. Now let's see the impact of COVID on employment. Now, based on the COVID-19 impact, the future workforce as discussed earlier, need to navigate new skill fill up, skill gaps, quick up skills and alternative credentialing very importantly. Secondly, change roles as full-time employees need to upskill to fit changing organization needs. So you, you have to compete with the existing employee who are already so skilled in the organization where you're entering as a freshman. Thirdly, you need to have a data literacy. And lastly, develop social roles as well as physical and mental well being. Flexible working system include creation of additional infrastructure and IT support will be done uh, by the company. And you have to develop those uh, additional uh, IT support wherever you are within your own um, home. If you're working from home or wherever you are, you cannot. Uh, say that, okay, uh, you know, I'm going to give you an interview on a mobile phone. Oh, my camera is off. Oh, my network is not good. Okay, my this happened or that happened. This, this is your uh, handicap. This will make you some problem in this coming year. So you need to create a small infrastructure and IT support for yourself as well. This is very important and paramount. See, since last year onwards, we can see a big decline on the job posting in some of the biggest economy like US in various sector, and it's continued to decline. This is going to have a global impact for, for sure. So you are in a very special period. You, you, you have to remember this and uh, you have to realize this fact. You can see here that employment and recovery phenomena 
workers who are looking to change fields are most interested now in transitioning into business and IT fields as they see growth in this sector. Manufacturing is taking a setback. As the most important reason for wanting to change field was to improve finances actually. And credentials most attractive to them are boot camps and certificates. So they're jumping on it and taking short term courses. They're taking um, online uh, tutorials, teaching, upgrading themselves, and trying to develop the skills, what they want, and jumping the career. So, how we have to address and upskilling our skills and gaps. So, now as you see, Upskilling, reskilling, and covering skill gaps are the, the key in this challenging times, which is ahead of you. You can see very clearly, current high unemployment will increase the skill gap as employers won't be able to hire everybody and everyone back who already quit or who who been laid off and new recruitment. They'll become more picky and will favor workers who they want to hire, who have future skills, which is in aligned with the company's growth and keeping the current situation. So by seeking candidates with high growth premium skills, companies will have a unique opportunity during the recovery to build a workforce they need for the future. So they have to be surviving. So they will only focus on the high growth premium skill workers. So it's, it's very important for you to understand this fact. Now there is a trend of increasing new skills, increasing new skills. Only 16% of new hires possess the skill needed for the current jobs and the jobs in future. So there is a big demand and supply gap. As existing roles may require up to 10 new skills by 2021 onwards. The number of skill required for a single job is increasingly by 10% year by year. So this all studies shows that there is a lot of need for everyone, including you, how to address your upskilling and skill gaps. The World Economic Forum estimates that 42% of the skills required from the global workforce will change between 2018 to 2022. By 2022, no less than 54% of all employees will require significant reskilling, upskilling, and with pandemic 2020 has made it more relevant. So that's, that's a fact. Gartner Talent Nurandata finds over 30% of the skill needed in coming three years or three years ago will, will soon be irrelevant. So it means you have to continue upgrade your skills year by year. Pearson Global Learners Survey finds that uncertainty in, and insecurity with the job market has driven the need of upskilling as you can see 45% of those surveyed found themselves in need of further education due to change in their job and job status. So as I mentioned, your pure degree is not going to lead you anywhere. You need to work and find ways to upskill you. We did it when we were students. You have to do it. And it's a time because very soon you'll be looking for your future career. So if you don't start to upskill yourself and increase your or reduce your skill gap, you will be nowhere. Of those who found themselves in need of further educating, new skills, changes in technology, and job insecurity, there were three main causes. They were the main causes, actually. 45% found a need of further education because their job and job status changed. And among those employed who find themselves in need for further education, 41% skills need that haven't been learned in school or colleges, as I mentioned. 39% requires to use a new form of technology or a new software in a job, which they, there is a demand within the organization. They have no goal. 
and 33% concerned with losing job or have lost the jobs. So this is something we need to ponder upon. Addressing upskills and skill gaps, content like IT and digital skills, especially now, automation is being adopted and implementing of these are in a rapid rate due to pandemic, every organization, making the need for IT and digital skills. Second, if soft skills, as per Deloitte, two thirds of all jobs by 2030 will be made up by soft skill intensive occupation. There where I'm trying my best since last one year to push you to develop these soft skills. There is there's some reason behind for me doing that. So developing and enhancing soft skills now will be the key to finding employment in the future job market, which I always believed and have a strong opinion. And I always share this with you. You are aware of that always. So addressing upscaling skill gaps, approach and methods, you have to do alternative credentialing. You have to align yourself with the industry. And you also have an opportunity in non-degree areas as well, but I think it's not so relevant for you. So you have to think very carefully and your approach and method on doing so should be very clear that you have to develop industry aligned alternatives to traditional degrees. So you have to start thinking other than your degree, which you get from the university, what additional thing you need to do and how you are going to make yourself ready on your on the job, which you are very interested and you want to go to, to find that kind of job. This is critical and very important. And now, businesses, if you see, a lot of things are changing in business environment as well. You can see by yourself, all the business are having digital transformation, empowering stakeholders, change system. Companies must adopt digital business models at the core to compete in post COVID world. So, if they don't take the action now, they will not be able to compete in the post pandemic period. And that's a time where you are going to be looking for a job. So you have to develop skills in project management, business process, financial analysis, business strategy, depend on different majors you are studying, machine learning, customer relationship management, CRM, change management. And as for the survey, long job longevity, actually job longevity is in supply chain management because of the current scenario. Business and management analyst, operations manager and project manager. So these are some of the areas where there's a longevity in the jobs, but there are some more. You have to focus on based on your, what kind of major you are studying and how you're going to reshape your career in the wake of the pandemic. So now what you need to prepare for the job interviews in pre post pandemic era. I think everybody knows this, but let us quickly look what exactly you need. Now all the interviews for the new job is online. Many job seekers perceive video interview as a not as a formal, as to face-to-face -face meeting in recently. The reverse is true, actually. So sometimes, as you, I, I always, uh, you must have noticed, I give you the screen, um, virtual screen to put behind you. You must be thinking, why this professor always give us every time the new screen to put as a virtual background, like today you're using, because it gives a kind of a image. You're, you're on a virtual network. So we want to give you kind of image, a kind of environment, uh, which uh, try to link with the current uh, topic 
you know so today we are using a lot of lights because the new year coming so we, we are in a different mood okay sometimes you also must be noticing i say adjust your camera do this do that because body language says a lot about you it shows how confident you are how open and approachable so on the interview you know the the guy who's uh, interviewing you he's seeing you in a, a damn big screen man and every action you blink of the eyes and your body language your hand movement and everything he's judging you he's judging you more deeply than he must have judging you when he, you met him face to face because here your face is in the in the in the whole screen you know so you have to remember there are certain rule which need to be followed without excuse for example when you go for interview or any formal setup don't use phones use laptops use ipad or a computer sometimes you may not have it but find a way for that particular if, you know interview a particular situation where to go and find that without any excuse should have a very good wi-fi connection because if you are a very good talented person and you always have a problem on your network and what you're trying to say other person cannot even uh, listen to you clearly the whole meaning is going nowhere so you need to do a kind of a preparation for an online interview. I think you all know this, but somehow or the other, you try to avoid it. You just take it lightly, which I want to stress upon today. Don't take it lightly. Know beforehand exactly where you'll take the call. You know, when you are taking a kind of interview, ideally should be a quiet room. You know, you have to make a pre-preparation before any online interview which you are going to face in future. So these are some of the points which I wanted to tell you, which is known to everyone, but remember, these are very important. You should know how to open your interview, obviously with the greetings, how you want to close it with a positive note and giving a kind of a, a kind of feeling of promise that you are very interested to join so-called his company. You should be, for example, uh, the other day, somebody asked me for an interview and I said, okay, uh, I give you my face, uh, sorry, this um, uh, Zoom link. They said, no, no, sorry, we don't use a Zoom link. We, know, we do interview on the WeChat. Other day, somebody, again, I said, I will give you Zoom. They said, no, no, we use it on Tencent. So, I always have to download those softwares. First, I have to test myself that when I'm talking, how, how it comes on the screen, how, how I look like, and so on and on. I, I, I myself have to do all this because I have to make myself familiar with the, these apps and this interview is important because it's my image. And I want to make sure that uh, it's not distorted and whatever information I want, uh, the person gets it. So these are some of the things which we need to take care and you need to take it very seriously. Another thing, the dress, how you wear, your appearance does matter, my dear. The first impression is the last impression. So there are, when you're online interview, there are certain don'ts and do's and something to avoid. For example, don't, don't wear white. If there's a white background, you're wearing white, make no sense. Depends on what kind of background you are. Don't wear intricate pattern. Be aware of the, of the more effect. Don't unbutton your shirt beyond one or two buttons. Obviously, should you wear ties? If not tie, okay. You have to look formal. So there are some things, you know, avoid bright light, avoid tan colors, metal or shining material for ladies, dangling earrings bracelets, etc. because that will make effect uh, on the on the viewers and on the interview, you know, because that is distracting him or her. Former clothes is something which you should be focused on. So these are some of things which don't wear the glare proof glasses or goggles, very important because that's not very formal and that's not entertained by the online 
interviewer. You have to plan in your mind what to say before getting into the interview, a kind of something you have to prepare a script in your mind. Be clear and positive when you speak. Review your career to date and understand your key skill strength. And your, you, know, you have to clear about your accomplishments and also your shortcomings because the interview will ask, what is a shortcoming? What is your weakness? And this situation, what will you do? And if this is a given uh, circumstances, how you'll behave or act. So you have to be very honest and very clear because every interviewer like honesty. You need to be able to explain your reasons of leaving your past employer if you're working somewhere before. And if you are a student and you're first time, so I'm sure you have done some part-time jobs or some internship, et cetera. So you should tell the interviewer clearly your short-term and medium-term career goals. And then why you did this and why you want to join his company, how it is aligned with each other. So give him a feeling of uh, consistency of what you have written in your resume and let him feel comfortable and uh, trust on you. You must do a thorough research on the job, what we say, JD, job description for which you are applying. Go to the website of this company, do a very thorough understanding of this organization. Every aspect from financial to commercial to sales to marketing to manufacturing, even some of the subject is not necessary for you to know because you may not be applying for those positions, but you need to know that. Because during the interview process, if you give some more information during the, your process of interviewing, the, the, the person who's interviewing you, he'll be very impressed. And you should be very clearly able to match your experience and roles and bold and loud. You need to convey what value you're going to bring to the company, why they should hire you. Why you, why not others? What you have niche, what you are special, which that company needs and you're able to address and you're able to deliver. So these are some things which you need to clearly understand. And last but not the least, follow up your interview. Don't forget to thank the interviewer, follow up with an email because you don't know today you may have been rejected, but maybe they still have your resume in the database and tomorrow a, a slot comes for you and you continue to kept a, a follow up with them and they have in your mind that they, they know, have some impression image, they'll call you back. Courtesy never hurts. So this is something which you need to ponder upon and you should be very clear on this issue. Lastly, it's all about you actually. All the time we, this whole event of today we are talking is only about you. So I would like to request you. I think you already did, some of my students already did. Some still did not do. Have you thought of doing a self-assessment test? Who are you? This is very important. Learn about yourself. That will help you to explore your correct career, that you may be a good fit based on what you have learned, not a fantasizing of, you know, live in a fantasy and some illusions and some dreams, which is not going to suit you or which is not correct for your job profile or your career in future. A self-assessment is the way to learn about yourself, gathering data, information about your work-related values, how you perceive a work, how, how is your attitude, you know, work-life balance, or you are workaholic, what kind of person you are, your interest, your personality type, and your attitude. So a self-assessment is very effective because this is something which is going to really help you to identify what kind of career you're going to choose. And that is what we are talking about today. And lastly, your characteristics, work-related values, very important. What values you think to your work? It could be many. For most of the people, it could be prestige, 
some people security for the government jobs. So everyone have their own understanding as far as work related values. So you have to think what kind of work related values you are looking at. Not only the high salary, that is everybody say I want a high salary, it's nonsense. High salary without a work related values will be hired and fired very quickly. So you have to very clearly understand this part. Interest, your likes and dislikes. You have to understand this very clearly also, because this will help you to your career planning, which kind of job will match your interest and you enjoy it because you don't forget your maximum part of your life is on your workplace. Like now your maximum part of your life is in your study in the university, but later it will shift to your workplace. You spend, some people spend nine, nine, six. Some people spend nine, five, five, depends, but still that is long part of your life goes on your workplace. So if your interest is not match, you're not happy, you're not enjoying, your life sucks. So you have to make yourself happy, whatever you are doing to, make yourself feel great and enjoy your work. Your personality type, as I mentioned, is very important so that you know this, you are a correct fit for this kind of career. Your aptitude, very important. You know, your natural talent. So a lot of things, what you're good in, example, math, science, visual art, music, verbal or written communication, so many, so many kind of aptitudes which you are good at, how is going to help you in your current job and how you think you are the best fit for you. That's something you have to keep in mind when you're choosing your career. So guys, this is very important. And I think some of my students already did the 16 personalities test, but who did not do, should do it. It is very simple, just that go to 16personalities.com and then you could able to test by yourselves free. So this is something which will let you know who you are, what kind of personality you have. So coming to the close of today's uh, uh, international lecture series, I would like to tell six personal factors that can smooth the process of your career change or going to a new career. Commitment, control, curiosity, change agility, connections, confidence. So six C's are going to help you. Commitment that you're dedicated to the purpose of managing your career and you're ready to take a change if required. Control your charge of your own career. You have a confidence, curiosity. You enjoy exploring the world, work and learning about rules and their requirements. And also sometimes you're trying to help and trying to do somebody else's job as well to learn. And because you have curious and your curiosity gives you more knowledge, change agility how to adjust in the different cross-culture environment or, or an organization where you're unknown and they have every organization have its own culture, how you integrate yourself in those organization culture. Then connection, your network, how you make your network within the organization and how you make a kind of a family kind of environment where you're working so that this connection not only helps you to have a happy working environment and support cooperation from everyone and your promotions. But also if some employees go a higher position, leave this company to another and you are having very good relation, he will offer you to join him or recommend you to somewhere else to have a better position. So this connection always help. And lastly, confidence, faith on yourself, ability to make your carry out wise career decisions. So these are some of the factors which you have to understand, and this is things to keep in mind in choosing your career. There are a few more things I would like to say before I close that first enjoy this adventure. 
when you are choosing your career. Carefully consider how you'll spend your first three months in that company. It's, you should you have to make a plan. You know you have to make your your you know plan in your mind. You know how you are going to uh, be doing next steps, next steps, next steps. Thirdly, seek the early wins as a way to build up self confidence, and also reassure the organization that has been right move to bring you on board. So I always mention you have to be self impressed by yourself who you are then only you can impress somebody else if you don't impress by yourself how can you impress someone else and if you're self impressed by yourself this will give you confidence this will give you a kind of pride this will give you a uh, entrepreneurial skills and also this will help you to go forward in life and lastly have fun man there will be challenges but transitions, whether chosen or in force, like what we are in today, will really enrich your outlook. We all are. We all are, actually. So these are something which you have to keep in mind and ponder upon before you actually try to go into a career plan. So thank you, guys. Thank you so much for patient hearing uh, today. And uh, you can reach me anytime for help. You know my email, you know my WeChat, you know where to find me. And now we are open for Q&A. So guys, you can uh, open your microphone and uh, you can um, ask questions. I have a lot of excellent students today uh, whom I taught for last one year, and I'm very proud of them. And uh, I'm sure they are asset to the NUA and also asset to themselves. So I'm very pleased. So guys, you can now ask questions. Uh, the floor is yours. So go ahead. Thank you, guys. Hassan, Salim, you always have questions. Where are you? Oh, uh, sir, I have a question. Okay. Um, how do we know uh, that we're making the right path? Usually, uh, uh, usually uh, we take a path, but uh, I'm usually like not sure because I have like doubts. So. How do I know like I'm on the right path? Very good question. So you want to say that if you choose a path and you want to make sure that you are in your right path or not, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, okay, let, let me ask Hassan, can you reply to your thumb? What is your take on this? Well, uh, regarding knowing if you're on the right path or not, to be honest, you won't know. You don't know that. The answer is you don't know. But what you do know is if you have a plan laid out, a goal in mind, and you have steps, and you are working towards their action, not in action. You are taking steps and actions towards achieving certain goals, certain steps. And uh, let's say you want to achieve financial independence by a certain age. And if you want that, you have a certain plan, you have certain stages to work towards it. And if you have all that in mind, I believe you're on the right track. But regarding this professor, I have a question, uh, the same topic. Uh, knowing that you're on the right path or all that, that's fine. But um, sometimes there are certain, you can say, certain things oh, in life, certain stuff that uh, stops you or uh, is a setback and you get lost and um, certain priorities change. 
but in working towards that you cannot it's impossible to break down that impossible how would you do that now for example a very plain example uh for me if i wanted to learn a certain subject or certain topics in a certain university certain institute i have to be there in person physically but uh that's very much impossible now in many of the countries they have announced that uh the future studies going on from 2022 they will be online schools universities colleges all alike and uh, they're going to do it all online because of the pandemic so how would you tackle that well you as i mentioned during my lecture that you should always have plan a b and c so this particular question is to answer you hasan so if something unexpected happen you still have plan b and even the worst case scenario you have also obstacle in plan b you still have plan c you know so this is life with lot of uncertainty we don't know especially before we were telling this as a kind of a saying life is short uh, we don't know what is tomorrow live for today all this was like a, a talk but now today is all become reality right so you need to keep your you know horizon broader and to answer your thumb you know when you choose your career path you should assess yourself what you are good at as what we are talking what is your strength are you having the required skills capability are you possessing those qualities that you will succeed on this path and if you did this analysis and self assessment about yourself and about what you are planning to do you should be very confident never give up if you give up you already lost you're a loser i don't think so anybody like to be a loser so you need to make sure what career path after due diligence after understanding your your personality your strength your competency framework your skill sets your uh, educational background your hobby your interest your family circumstances and many other factors after considering and you took a path or you know a, a way to go just go on it and as i mentioned to hasan you could have plan b and plan c as well because it's always better to have alternate plans okay if it does not mean that you have plan b and c you 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 start to think okay okay it doesn't matter if plan a doesn't work you have to make sure plan a works and that path you took is confident but just if some accident unexpected circumstances politically or a, a force majeure condition like we are living in or natural disaster or or something which is beyond your control happens obviously you have plan b so i think this is what i should answer you you follow me yotam can you hear me yes yes okay. yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So, Ayman, you are saying something. I saw you here. Ayman, go ahead. Uh, professor, mm. I was saying something. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, uh, I don't know who asked the the first question, but uh, my question was related to that uh, question. Actually, I mean that question uh, that uh, are we. are the right path because at the age of experience we can say at the age of uh, 15 to 16 that we enter i mean particular age that we experience many different things well uh, experiences differ from person to person but actually we enter into such an, a certain criteria during uh, this age i mean uh, 15 to 16 year so the thing is that uh, we often find meaning in in path we are i mean that uh, are we at the right path searching for the meaning of like that we are searching in particular this area uh, to go further uh, 
we are often i mean it's not related to the generations it happened in history i mean in every part that every in, to everyone that uh, oh, what are we what are we doing and what is the purpose of it so how we tackle these questions i mean how we answer uh, these questions in a more sufficient way okay thank you ayman are you here um, yes professor so uh, um, you, you have to answer salim uh, salim would you mind uh, just briefly uh, to the point like exactly what are you trying to know about yeah, yeah. i Your want question. to know about that we all experience i mean this thing that are we at the right part uh, uh are we doing the right thing for what we are doing i mean what we believe uh, to find in that particular field or area so uh i said that this is the question we often face i mean most of us face the existential questions about uh, about our understanding towards life and towards the field that we are working so uh, the the question the uh, friend of us uh, asked so it needs to be addressed i mean it needs to be addressed in a more efficient way so what it would be your answer regarding this question well salim uh, when you asked that about uh, whether we were in a right way uh, you said about one part that is in life and one part that is in our normal the activity that we do so that's more like uh, i believe this is a uh, two part question that deserves a two part answer and on the case of in our daily everyday life like uh, what is our purpose or or actually should i say that uh, whether we are on the right path or no uh, it is hardly it is hard to be certain of it to be honest uh, whether we are on the right track or the the way i'm thinking or the, my beliefs are, are the right one so it is hard to determine the least that we can do is be more tolerant towards each other but uh, on the other aspect when you're talking about uh, whether are we on the right track of getting things done in our life i believe uh, at first my approach is always do your homework and do your research just to see that whether it fits it whether it fits the right criteria whether it fits the right criteria that you're looking for and uh, try to do your own research at first and if that's not sufficient enough then try trust try to uh, trust your uh, guts more and uh, into into going at it and at the end of the day you won't realize whether it's right for you until you've done it and if you're just sitting and keep on wondering whether uh, you're on the right path or not uh, you'll never realize it you just have to take the path and uh, take the and take the initiative to go forward that's in the case of when we are um, talking about things that we pursue uh, i believe I've answered your question, and, and that is what I have to say to you. Yeah, thank so. you for the answer. Thank you for the answer. So, what you mean that we have to, I mean, tackle this question, uh, I mean, in a more practical way than theoretical. I mean, this existential question we often face. Yeah. Yeah. Regarding the existential question, I believe uh, it is something to be keep wondering about, and uh, on an individual level. But I, I just think that uh, we shouldn't be too certain to the point that we exert our uh, ways of thinking onto others and rather we should leave room for others perspective and uh, others input about what they have to say about uh, which is the right path and what they think is the right path and whether there is an objective right path or a subjective right path that's that remains uh, under discussion yeah obviously it is yeah yeah thank you Thank you so much, Ivan. Lovely answer. Salim, are you satisfied with the answer? Yeah, Professor, I, I am. Yotan? Yes, I'm very much satisfied. Okay, great. So it's, it's been wonderful. Yes, uh, next question. Okay, Daniel. Okay, let me uh, see you. Where are you, Daniel? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and you ask question. Uh, hello, hello everyone. On this call, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. 
Well, I have a simple question regarding, in regards to this topic. We're talking about preparing ourselves for our careers in such challenging times. Well, uh, probably for, if I'm, let me, let me give an example. If I'm a student, probably doing an engineering course, doing an engineering course, and I have to study online in such a practical course. Probably in my second year, I'll have to, to do an internship. I'll have to do something practical. If I'm doing, let me say, aeronautical engineering, and my country has no companies that, that actually deal in aeronautical engineering, how do I go about this challenge of getting where to practice so that I can be ready to take on that career? Yeah, that's the question. Very interesting question. This question was raised uh, just a couple of uh, days before by one of the aeronautical engineering student from uh, your campus to me. The two circumstances, actually, uh, now the two circumstances, yeah. First is because of pandemic, you have to stay at home, you cannot travel. Okay, in that case, also there's a solution. And if you can travel, still there's a solution. So this gentleman uh, who was asking me the question, he had a similar circumstances as our medical engineering student, how he can have internship or hands-on to learn or go forward to have a clear career path. So I recommended him ESA, European Organization on the Air Aircraft Safety Organization. And he was offered a course, Section 60, 196A, where he could do study online, and then he can go to the nearest ESA center for giving examination. So for example, if you go to ESA website, they have almost every part of the world, there is a testing center where you can prepare yourself uh, online study, and even you go there and you study uh, physically, and then you get hands-on training and also get certification, which would help you to work in the airline industry, aircraft maintenance organization, and at the airport. So, you know, uh, some situation where uh, you have uh, this kind of problems, you still have an options. Another student also approached me and he said that uh, he thinks that ESA is not something very intriguing to him and he wants to do a little bit more advanced uh, kind of things to enhance his knowledge more deeper into uh, aviation field and uh, he wants to join a research group. So I helped him to find one research group who is doing an electric aircraft researching and also the similar group is doing another kind of uh, hydrogen operated plane researching group. But, but I told him he's not going to get any money out of that because this entry is very restrictive. And if he goes there, he goes there with not a research fund, but to assist the existing researchers. And uh, he's there now. And he's, he sent me email the other day and he says he's enjoying and he's learning a lot of things. In fact, uh, uh, two weeks back, even um, uh, NUAA, we got a, a research project on the uh, aircraft uh, simulators on the V-shaped aircraft, especially, which is uh, uh, in China, there's a big demand at the moment, there's no such simulators uh, of V-shaped aircraft. And uh, some of the students from our class, two students already joining in, and uh, some student from software engineering, because it needs a lot, lot of software input. We need mechanical engineering students who have to bring in mechanical input, and we need aeronautical engineering students who understand aerodynamics, who understand uh, you know, this kind of field and physics very well. So, you know, you have to find ways and means and methods trying to approach the university, try to approach professors, your peer group. And I'm sure somewhere or the other, somebody will be able to help you. So where, where there is a will, there is a way. I always believe that. So 
don't think that uh, you are in a in a situation where there, there's no option because you are not having those infrastructure wherever you are you can always find a way out and there's always an option so this is my recommendation keep your broader horizon keep your networking contact discuss with teachers professor don't be shy the worst case they will refuse you how does it matter maybe 10 people refuse you the 11th person give you an opportunity so this is how it works even for you applying for a job do you think every job you apply you can get a position thousands of resume or, or at least 200 resume you will send and maybe one or two people will call you for the interview so that's the reality and we have to face this do you follow me yes 100 percent do you agree my dear do you agree yeah, I definitely, I, I agree 100%. Okay, so, uh, you know, it's not that, as I mentioned, for everything, many people will say no, but you should never give up, continue to try, and somebody will open the door for you. So this is what I have learned in my life. And uh, you should think positive. And when you have a positive attitude, and you are having a, a kind of conviction of not giving up, I'm 100% sure you'll succeed. So somebody asked me a question here, Angel Manny. I would like to ask a similar related question. How do you choose a convenient organization? Okay, what do you mean by convenient organization? Angel, can you elaborate? What do you mean by, uh, maybe I can open your uh, microphone and you can speak or you can come on the panelist. You can speak or I allow you to talk maybe. I, yeah, no need to open camera. You can talk, I allowed you. Wait a moment. Can you can you come up? Uh, you can talk now, Angel Mani. You can talk. You can open your microphone and talk. Okay, I think uh, she she has an internet issue. Maybe okay. Let me answer. Okay. How do you choose a convenient organization? Convenient organization means in respect of uh, geographical convenience or the organization uh, which you really love to work with. And uh, that is your dream organization. Like okay, everybody has a dream. I wanted to ask um, by convenient organization, I meant um, an organization that can further your studies or that could actually help you to fill the gap between um, academics and um, experience for like when we go to work, like it's not always what we've learned that's only important, but also some experience or some exposure towards the um, career line in which you'd want to work. So I wanted to know how best do you know which is the best organization you can join like in aviation, you said there's ESA, there are also ESA. various other organizations which are out there. So how do you choose from a wide variety? Okay, good question. Thank you so much. Okay, so to answer you, ESA, for example, which I mentioned, it's, it's a kind of a, this is a certification organization. This organization certifies all the airline company, airport uh, maintenance team, and all the people working there that they are certified to carry out certain specific job and roles in the airline industry or aviation industry. So this is some way, uh, you know, you gain experience at the same time you get uh, a certification, but it's not a job. Now, if you are in China and if you study in China, I think you may have some reason. For example, if I go to study in some country, I may have some interest why I choose this country because I want to explore that country or I may like to work in that company, a country and some companies in that country. Or sometimes people say, okay, I just go there and then get a degree and then I come back to my country and choose a company which have got the same origin from China and I have opportunity to work with them because I know how to speak Chinese and uh, I have been in the Chinese university, it helps me. Okay, the, this is also can be a situation. So now to answer you, there are many organization uh, in China, especially where you can join as a training. AVIC, you heard about, in fact, NUA, all the famous professors and alumni of NUA are the part of the only organization like Boeing, 
and uh, Airbus and Bombardier uh, you know, in China. So you have to, uh, you know, find a way to, because you, you already have your alumni there. And if you apply for a training ship and you have a required skill set that this that you are going to bring in some value addition in your training program while you are going to work in such an organization like Avic, you can apply and you can get an opportunity and you can get recommendation letters from the university professor, your teachers, and so on. In fact, I write almost every week 10 or 15 recommendation letter to the students uh, globally from Global Uni Talks, NUA and other universities where I've been professors uh, and I have been delivering lectures and so on. And um, they all out of the success ratio is 85%, which is not bad because it also depends on yourself that you, know, you are committed to particular job on that particular training and you are going to complete it from the beginning to end you will not skip in between and there are many factors which uh, you make to convince the organization in fact china has many aircraft uh, parts manufacturing organization there are certain zones we say special economic zones which uh, only prepare the aircraft parts in china and there are many companies who are manufacturing those components and supply to the top airline industry within China and within abroad. So you need to do a little bit of digging, finding information about these companies and trying to find some connection network. If not, write to them and trying to communicate with them, see their job postings. Every company have got an internship and management training program every year. And they, a lot of them come to NUA actually for recruiting. But at the moment, mostly Chinese students avail this opportunity and foreign students, they don't. Two reasons which I watched and I observed that they're shy because of the language, because if you want to work in a company uh, which is based in China, you should have at least a HSK-6 certificate so that you can speak very well and a basic reading and writing is a plus, but speaking is the most important. If you cannot communicate, it will be hard to find a job. So there are some who are very successful, maybe 5% of the students of international students, they have mastered this kind of language talent and they're using it to the best of advantage, having house, cars, good jobs in China and doing very well. So it all depends on you. So you have to identify your dream company, after selecting what kind of domain you want to be, and then try to find a bridge how to go there. It's a long process, but you can try. At the same time, you could keep alternatives, not only one company, several companies which come into your framework of your thinking, and then try to pitch in. No? Do you follow me? Yes, sir, I do, but I also have another question. Please um, go ahead. How about for early in their career, like um, considering some of us who are still like, I'm a first year student. So how do we get something that's more convenient for first year students or for students who have just begun? Or like in the case, in a recent case, I had a student who asked me about how to apply to school and um, stuff like um, starting in aeronautics. And I really couldn't answer her because I didn't know exactly what to say. So I'm just asking for those who are early or who are just beginning in aeronautics what would be most convenient for us to like bridge the gap between what we know and what we are studying and what we want to actually um contribute into the area of work so you mean to say you want to identify the field of study what are the future prospects yes sir great great question hiba are you here Iba. Yes, professor. You're an aeronautical engineering student? No, a mechanical oh. engineer. Mechanical, yeah, sorry, mechanical engineering student. Uh, give me a moment. Let me ask this question for my aeronautical engineering student. Hold on. Who's going to answer her? Hasibul? Mechanical professor. Also mechanical. 
So who, who is a volunteer? Who will answer her? Volunteer. Corey. I am mechanical, sir. So I've got all, I'm just calling all mechanical guys only. Yeah? So let Yuchen, me see. Yu Chen is arrow. Oh, my Yu Chen, my friend. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, Where is my Chen. friend Yu Chen? Yeah. He's my there, professor. Hi, Yu Chen. Hello, professor. Yeah, hi. So how you answer my friend? You are an aeronautical engineering a senior student to her. Okay, uh, as you can repeat the question again. So just now I got uh, lost. Her question is that she want to know as a, she's a freshman, uh, junior mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. she's, she chose aeronautical engineering and her friends ask, what is the prospects of studying aeronautical engineering in your future career and how you're going to, uh, you know, focus on which kind of jobs, where you will be working on and how to integrate yourself. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. You Chen, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I enjoy, I'm Yu Chen. So I'm a year two aeronautical engineering student. So I just uh, basically introduce myself. I think what I can tell you is that if, if you like, solving problems and you get the satisfaction uh you like to get the kind of satisfaction through solving problems like complex problems especially uh in aerospace view i think yeah then that's probably the thing something for you it's something for you to look forward to because in aerospace uh, you yeah news you need to be very very technical you need to be very good at logical reasoning uh you must have the kind of passion to solve complex problems with whatever tools that whatever materials that you have learned, you have studied. Then uh yeah, especially if you have special interest in aerospace, then yeah, I think study-wise will be easier for you. Then uh when you go outside to work, I think every country have different uh uh I think every country is different, their demand is different. So I can't answer like for your <laughs> uh not sure which country you're from, I can't answer for that. But I you think can ask my... which country you're from, my friend. Okay, Angel, which country uh, you're from? from? South Africa, but I'm currently in Zimbabwe. Okay. Oh, okay. Then uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure about your country's demand uh, for, aer for aerospace jobs. Yeah, but for my country, uh, in Singapore is quite high in demand. Yeah, because uh, my country, majority of uh, Singapore actually is a very small island, so we rely on import and export a lot. So we buy a lot of uh, airplanes here and there. So aerospace will uh, never run out for demands. So yeah, even though it's aerospace as the year comes, right, it's very competitive. But if you really like planes, like the structure, and especially when you solve the problems, and after you solve the problems, the plane is uh hundred percent functional, and you're able to see fly. Then I think that's the kind of satisfaction that you will get. If that's the thing that you really like it, yeah, then I think you're on the right track. If not, uh, I would suggest you go ahead and think through it. Think through it. Why, why do you want to study aeronautical, uh, aeronautical engineering course? Yeah, because I think you are the only person that can answer that. Yeah, for us, we can only can give from our perspective. That is uh, something that, from my perspective to you. Thank you, Yue Chen. Actually, uh, to, to uh, add on to Yu Chen, when you choose a subject like aeronautical engineering, you need to be very good and solid foundation of physics, mathematics, and a bit of science. And for example, uh, just, just now even somebody said, uh, South Africa is the best country in Africa for aviation, many pilots and other experts of aviation normally trained there from my country. So, uh, Ahmed, you can open your camera and come up. Uh, I would like to uh, have some feedback from you. Yeah, so you have to have a very good uh, knowledge and foundation of these some of the core subjects. And you should have a passion to be in this industry. So there are many openings for this. You could go to aircraft maintenance, you can go to the uh, work in a airline company. You can uh, even choose to be a pilot. 
you know, it all depends on what exactly your dream is all about and how you plan and what is your financial strength and what is your, you know, your technical skills which you want to develop and which field interests you as a, as, a, as a student. So these are the three main, and it doesn't stop you. Aeronautical engineering major can also go in some different field which is uh, related to, uh, uh, you know, same domain in some other industry as well. So for example, there are so many companies who are doing uh, related products, uh, which is similar to the airline industry. So there is an immense opportunity for all kind of jobs available in this field and in this domain. So, and if you're from Zimbabwe, I, I know you have some input to say, my friend is from Zimbabwe, what options you think uh, she could enjoy? You have some background on this, I believe as well, yeah. Is it about the aviation industry and his major, right? Yes, aeronautical engineering, yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, for me, I chose this major because of the market demand in my country. Now, in my country, aeronautical engineering, is a, it's a rare major to be found here. And uh, the first time when I was making um, application about aeronautical engineer, I checked the um, university here in my country and uh, I got to see that it's something that will be uh, taught in the future years. So right now it is not available. And also the market demand here is well best because uh, like here I'm, I'm from Zanzibar and uh, one day my brother told me that uh, he, my brother is working in, in airport he is working in weather forecast. So he told me that uh, this major, uh, like you know, like uh, other companies here in the country, they export uh, engineers outside outside of Tanzania. At the same, at the same time, outside of uh, Africa, they got their engineers for their airlines from I think from America. I, I'm, if I'm not sure but it's from Western countries. So you can see how, how the market demand about of uh, aeronautical engineers is here in my country. That's why I chose this major. And also I chose this major because of uh, aviation industry in my country is still growing. So I believe that the time I, I will finish my bachelor degree, I will be in the right track. Uh, uh, to be employed here. That is why I choose this major. Thank you so much, Emma. To add on, the future of this world is now Africa. So from Asia, uh, the future will move to Africa. So actually, there will be a big boom it has been delayed, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. Otherwise, it must have been already accelerating by now. But nevertheless, we all believe, as per the indicators, the, the future is Africa. So there will be a huge demand of everything. And airline industry and aviation industry obviously will have a very big demand as well. But this is a very niche industry. It's like it's not uh, something, uh, you know, a, a lot of people are involved in it. I don't know, uh, for example, in a particular country, how many students graduate who is doing aeronautical or aerospace engineering and what kind of demand supply circumstances it. But I still believe that this major and the good student who have got a good uh, project while they are studying. For example, you are just a first year. When you come on the second and the third year and when you start doing several projects, hand-on experience, uh, luckily, if you're back to campus, and I believe you will have a chance to come back. Uh, and if you come back and, you know, all this training and all this um, project you do under professors, teachers, I'm sure it will help you to find a very good job in your own country, it's all even Zimbabwe. And uh, nevertheless, I would like to mention to you that you should know that NUAA, as, as a brand, is one of the top university in China in the field of civil aviation and also in the field of aeronautics and astronautics. There's no parallel to anyone else. And you also, I'm sure you know it, all the pilots of China who fly planes all come from NUAA only. So you are in the right kind of university 
with the right kind of professors and you, you know a lot of big research and you know i'm sure you know that many historical inventions in the airline industry has been done by nua itself so with the background of the university with the professor's input and the, your research work your your graduation thesis which you do under your teacher uh, and in the in a field and the a topic which you choose is going to make a lot of difference for paving your way to work in this industry in your country and i'm pretty confident that you'll find a good job if you still want to be in zimbabwe or even in any part of africa do you follow me? Yes, Angel? sir. Thank you. Yes, yes sir, I follow. Okay, very Seems good. Like I so far, I'm in the right direction. Thank you for just certifying most of the things that I've been thinking about and considering. So you got all the answers or something still uh, you want to, still there is something which is left to be answered? I got most of the answers. Thank you very much. Okay, I think uh, you should be pretty confident. It's just a start and there's a long way to go. And uh, during the whole journey, you will find it uh, uh, more promising and a lot of things you can do, as I mentioned. And as I also mentioned, not only this, you should also develop some of the skill sets uh, by doing some of the, you know, technologically oriented courses and many other options, whatever is available to you that will also help you in whatever career you want to choose in the future. Thank you so much for the question. So we take another question before we uh, close this Q&A session. So we are going to have a new year kind of a celebration online. We have a batch of 2021 and also batch 20 and also some of our seniors who are here. Uh, unfortunately, we should be having a new year party uh, while we should be in campus. Uh, Yotam, do you remember our New Year party? Yeah, yes, Yotam. I remember. It was a very nice time. Yeah, can you go a little away from the uh, computer so that your voice is not echoing? So you move your position a bit. Yeah. So which new, uh, when, last time in 2019, you attended the New Year party with us, right? Uh, I actually uh, didn't uh, attend the class, but uh, I mean the event, but uh, Hira told me all about it. I also saw the videos and pictures and uh, it was a really very nice event as I've understood. Okay. Uh, actually, guys, uh, Yotam, can you introduce yourself? You are the seniors of all the people here. Can you introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. One of the seniors uh, in NUA. Um, uh, Professor Wallace has taught me in my kidding, which was my favorite task from all the other uh, tasks. And even in that class, I have I've developed my uh, skills in presentation and in marketing and in communication with people. And even to this day, I am very thankful uh, to Professor Wallace because I am seeing uh, the skills I've produced in that class uh, bearing fruits uh, in my life. So I'm very grateful. And my name is Gyotam Mohanes. I'm from Ethiopia. Thank you, Yotam. Um, I wish to inform you that Yotam won the best uh, presentation and the project uh, in the marketing for his class. And he's one of the best student of that batch. And I'm very happy that he's still connected. You know what happens uh, for a teacher, you know, we teach so many students every year, but only a couple of students, a handful of students keep connected with you. And uh, they go with a lifelong journey and uh, you'll come as one of them. And, uh, and then I'm sure many more will be coming in in the future and we still have a lot many in the past. So thank you, Yotam. And uh, it was nice um, for your first question. So the last question for today, who's going to take? The floor is open before we go for our new year, singing, dancing, joke, 
session and the lecture will be over and professor will change his position to be a friend okay guys who's the next the last question you can type here or you can uh, close uh, you open your camera and talk hiba yes i was looking for hiba yeah hiba you're quite quiet today me Sorry. professor yes <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I've been, I've been like, you know, talking this whole semester. So I think being one day quite, it's just slightly small difference. Okay. I have a question to you. I remember when I asked you last time, what you want to do in your life and your career. And I remember you told me that you want to be entrepreneur lady. So will you share why you have so strong conviction to be a, a lady entrepreneur and you have what what makes you feel that you have those qualities attributes those kind of uh, how does horizon to be a successful entrepreneur after you finish your studies so this could be a kind of uh, knowledge to all of us here because you are the one i know who want to be entrepreneur in the future so that's why i called you yeah mm, thank you for your question professor I think the reason I want to be a lady entrepreneur is because uh, I have a big commitment to that. And I see myself, I want to grow up myself in a way which is to be more successful, independent, uh, dependent woman. And yeah, I think I have, uh, I'll have like, I believe, I believe I can achieve that if I consist, like continue on the same path I'm doing right now, which basically, uh, it goes on with like about my curiosity, confidence, uh, the connections, most importantly, commitment. So I think that's one, like a lot of, one of the most reasons I wanna be a lady entrepreneur is to be successful. I'm not talking about financially, but yeah, it's something between me and myself to achieve a thing. I have that goal and I cannot stay in my place until I achieve it, no matter what. So yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. One more question to you. Sure. What is the take home after study with me for two semester, one year and hard work and the grilling you've gone through? And uh, what is your take home and what you learned and what you would like to share with our young 2021 20, batch? That's a really good question. Uh, there are a lot of stuff I learned with you, Professor. There are many, many things. One of them is how to control myself in some situations. <laughs> I used not to be too, I used not to be the kind who can control their expressions nor their emotions when they have they're in certain uh, circumstances. So I became uh, like this, like I I was I'd have to say that um, I learned how to control my, my myself thanks to you. And also I learned how to develop my leadership skills and how to communicate with people and how to uh, set up a goal and achieve it no matter what. Although like we have all of us, uh, some circumstances and some a lot of challenges uh, that is to talk about the time and a lot of things and life people have their own life. So yeah, this, Two like semesters with you, professor, taught me a lot of things, and it made me grow. Uh, it it grew something in me. I'd say, uh, like I learned things that it made me. I feel myself like it changed compared to the first time I joined your class, professor. Thank you, Iba, for your uh, good words, and I'm sure you will be a very successful entrepreneur. When you make a lot of money, don't forget us, share a little bit to us as well. Okay, so we will be waiting. <laughs> Thank you so much. So now I will call upon on this note, uh, two more of my students, Ayman and Hassan. Uh, what is your take on what Hiba said just now? In what way, Professor? What did you learn after two years of grilling with me? and how it's going to help you in your future career, how you use this. Uh, how I was you thinking, make yourself, first of all, how you make yourself stop? special. My takeaway is why stop? I want to continue learning. 
I mean, you're a phenomenal, amazing teacher and uh, who pushed me beyond my boundaries. So I believe the one way to know your limits and to find out what you can achieve and what you can learn and what you can do is uh, have someone push you because sometimes pushing yourself is not enough. Yes, thank you, Hassan. You are the only student I remember you stayed awake whole night with me twice. So I will never forget you. And you you never you keep telling me, Professor, you can take a rest. I will deal it. I will do it. But I said, no, no, I will be there. I will be there to help to be together with you. Yes, you you are, we are phenomenal as this. You are great. And um, I'm sure that we'll have a long journey uh, on mentorship to you. You're always welcome. Because uh, you're a great guider. You're a great mentor. Thank you. So no matter much. what people say, just know that you're amazing and you're doing a great job. Keep at it. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you so much. Your words make me happy on the new year. I will more charged. Yeah. Ayman, my future minister. Well, uh, well, there are a lot of takeaways, to be honest, from the uh, the. Uh, the experience that we all got to share with uh, with you, uh, in in particular, like the personal benefit, if I have to highlight on that, is um, I've noticed like me, me being pushed beyond the boundaries uh, made me realize certain certain skills and certain potentials that was um, unknown to me uh, prior to that. So um, I am fascinated about more uh, about more what I can learn about myself by being pushed. And uh, yeah, I, I believe um, being in your class was an opportunity for me to learn more about myself and my uh, capabilities. And and yes, I believe you have enabled not only me, but uh, there are others also uh, that, that you have pushed them in a certain way that they later found out uh, certain capabilities of themselves that they didn't know about. And I believe that um, that journey of self-discovery is very refreshing at the end of the journey. And I believe it makes us hungry for more to find out more about ourselves and to know, like, you know, uh, what is our barriers and how many barriers can we break and how many and how much could we grow further. So basically, that is what your class has enabled us. And that is what you have also equipped us with. Uh, you've equipped us with certain skills that I believe will be of great value in the professional world and in the corporate world. And I believe uh, we could uh, we could associate those uh, skill gaining to your class and our short experience with you. Uh, it has been very impactful, to be honest, uh, the time that we have spent with you. And I believe it, it will have a strong... Uh, it, it will leave a strong mark on our achievements. That is what I have to say. Thank you, Ayman. You guys were the awesome batch, as I mentioned today. And uh, this is our last class. Next week is your finals. So i really proud that I was a teacher for your batch. You guys are awesome. Incredible work you have done. You have really stretch yourself out the boundaries, as you mentioned. And I really cherish my journey with you because for the teacher, it's also, I enjoy it with you guys. It's a process, both sides. And I'm sure that uh, this memory will be forever and it will be long lasting. So coming back, uh, we have two more people here to share something. So I'll ask Salim, the question to you is what you would like to tell the batch 2021 to prepare for the next one year grilling with me? Thank you, Professor, for the question. Uh, well, to be honest, I mean, while we were at 2020, I mean, there were all lot of thoughts regarding i mean we were uh, especially we were impatient right because it's not temporary the current situation or we can say it's a uh, uh, new normal uh, so the thing is be patient uh, the things you have right now be focused on them 
I mean, seize the moment. Uh, stay focused on the on the activities that you are having right now because these are the foundations that you are having. I mean, yeah, we have. I mean, we have thoughts regarding to experience a university to be there to be. I mean, a committed environment. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we the hum humans, we always want ourselves to be engaged uh, in a particular force to do something that what university or in, an institution do to us. So that would I uh, say that to uh, be independent regarding this thought, be more focused on day to day activities. So that's it, Professor. Most of all, I would say that be patient. Thank you, Salim. So Shana Lim, our role model, a shy girl, today is a team leader, rocking and doing an excellent job. And Shana, we are very proud of you. So what you think, whatever changes happen in your life during all this grilling process of one year, how does it help you in your future life? Mm, I think if I say for the critical thinking class is really because it's my first time to be a leader in this semester for critical thinking. So yeah, it's a great experience and I really appreciate for my members. They, were, they all are very supporting me. And then it's like, uh, yeah, if, if without them, I cannot make it. I can make it, but it's like, they really give me a lot of support. Serious. And then, uh, I think the most, the most of the, uh, the important things from this I learned is, I think it's the leadership skill. And I lead my teams to achieve all the targets for this semester and, and sending, and, yeah, I think it's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> what, wh why you choose to be a leader? What motivated to choose you to be a leader? I guess, actually, I'm the one, like, I'm trying to be a leader, but I don't have much skill because uh, in my secondary school, I, I also become a leader, but still less experienced than others, you know? Like, you, you can see all of them, mostly elder than me and then I feel like I have less experience than them yeah so I need more chance to learn and have spend have to spend more time to put more efforts yeah that's it wonderful thank you so much Shana you have done a great job and you are one of the role model we have seen you transforming. Actually, actually, as you can say, edge is not nothing to do with the experience, but but it's like I less one year than others, you know. It's like I need to pay more efforts on it. Actually, edge, edge is not nothing to do, but I really have to work harder than others, you know. That's it. Great. Congratulations and best wishes to you. I'm sure you'll be shining in future and you have got a, a very good personality and uh, you're hardworking. And you, you, you know, you, I like people, students who are like a sponge, you know, who like to learn a lot of things and who continue to uh, upgrade themselves and you are one of them. So very good. So the last I asked Faraza, the question is, what did you learn during this one year, whatever you learned in academic writing and in science of creativity and critical thinking, how this is going to help you in your future career, which you're going to choose? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I actually learned a lot. Like I, yeah. I learned a lot from both the academic writing classes and the critical thinking classes. And to a some point, I feel like, uh, you know, it, it, like I say, like something that you feel like you don't need, but you actually need. And I feel like 
when I was choosing the courses, I, I felt like I wouldn't need this thing. Like uh, I'm just reading to get the exams and like to pass the exams and like complete the school curriculum. But after getting to uh, after getting into the courses, I now know that this is something that I really need and it's gonna help me in my future careers or my future activities because personally, I first yeah, like Shana, I I don't like being a leader. I've, okay, I, I never like participate in leadership activities, but this experience like that I'm getting in this semester, this helped me a lot. I'm open, right now I'm open to, um, I can like give my ideas out, something that I, I never used to be doing. Like I was really shy and somebody that said in the back. So with this um, causes right now, like I, I feel like I'm more confident and comfortable with myself than the way I was before. So this this take this course actually took me to another level in my life. You know, it's it's just this is something that I uh, keep noticing day by day. Like it it came me to it's it's taking me to another level because right now I am free and I can express myself and my ideas. I know I I know I have some leadership experiences and it's actually a good uh, experience and it's gonna help me a lot in my future careers. Thank you, Faraza. You have done a marvelous job as a team leader and um, you are always on time to finish your assignments. You have a great team and uh, very cooperative. I think uh, it was a good learning curve and experience you had. I, I can see that uh, with your work. Thank you. So, pleasure. thank you so much. So, let's see the last one uh, for tonight. Uh, I was seeing Corey, my teaching assistant. I like one personality in him, which al always is in my mind. He's the man of promise. He's the man who want to win. He's a, he's a guy who is thoroughly confident and he makes a resolution in advance that he will win. There are very few people like this you meet in this world and he's just one of them. And this inspired me a lot about him. So Corey, how you yes, got sir. this kind of conviction and what made you what you are today? Will you like to share this with all other students so that we could learn something from you and with your experience and how you developed those and what made it? So many questions. Oh, yes. I thank you so much, Professor, for guessing me up. I was nice. Um, to answer that question, I think I wouldn't be how I am today if, if I didn't like live a very difficult lifestyle. Everything that I have to get in my life is through struggle. So until you really struggle, until you really hit the pits in life, you're never really going to have this desire, never going to be charged or hungry enough. Like when you're studying, I always push myself. I don't sleep. I want to be better than everyone. Okay, not better than everyone. I mean, I want to get like the best possible score for myself. And that may mean being better than everyone, but everyone's different. So <laughs> I just want to say uh, it would be because we've all we've all been through some 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 tough, some tough times. But I think I wouldn't be if I where I am today if I didn't really, really go through a lot, especially with the pandemic, especially with how things are back in my country. So it's all necessary for character development. And also you, Professor, you push me so much. Um, and it's a good thing because we need to be pushed and made um, sometimes to be put in a bit of an uncomfortable situation because we never really learn if we're never encountering anything foreign. So yeah, all the experiences I've gained with you in the past two years and in the future, um, I'm very grateful. So that's all from my part. Also to my team members, who give me a hard time every single day to deal with them. It's it's always very hard, but I really love them and I love our batch so much. Everyone here is my friend. I, I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much for, for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you, Kari. You are awesome and uh, you have done a great work. And uh, I like uh, your personality and uh, so you come a hard way in life. So that is the key. You want to be a winner, right? 
So yes. we all we all have to learn this. Actually, even myself, I come in a very hard way in life, to be honest. I've seen the worst, I've seen the best, both. But I learned a lot from my worst, and that's what made me the to look, see the best, to be honest. So I think you will have the same experience, and I pray for you. And uh, God will be with you. Wish you all a happy new year. Now it's a short time, guys. So Hassan, you are going to be uh, the host for this uh, so-called online new year celebration with all of our students. Tomorrow we are going to start a new year. So next 30 minutes, we are going to have some fun and then back to study to prepare for the examination. Okay, Hassan, start rocking, okay? So, uh, I'm on, you, you are ready, looks like, huh? Not really. I'm not in my uh, party getup, as you can see. Doesn't matter. It's all okay. So I'm now stopping the live stream, and it's our personal time. Thank you so much, for guys, for being today uh, on this international lecture series. And uh, it has been a very good journey with you all. And uh, wish you all Happy New Year. And uh, 